This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to the official Gran Turismo 7 lap guide for Spa Franco Shop. Now this lap guide will be different from many other lap guides where I am showing you the exact optimal route through every single corner and with every precise setting that you can change to make sure that you're having the absolute fastest lap time you possibly can get in Gran Turismo 7. So let's begin. One of the most important things that you can do on your first opening laps here is to make sure that there are these weird kind of signs with numbers on them next to the racetrack. I think in European units, that's like how far in meters or something these signs are relative to the next coming corner. But in freedom points, it actually means that those are the amount of seconds that you'll get removed after the race of various penalties that the establishment likes to put on to your lap times for various reasons that are like, you know, corner cutting or crashing into other people and kind of that stupid stuff. So these are very important that you want to make sure that you get rid of as many of them as possible in the opening laps. So then you can really focus on dialing in your laps to making sure that you're going as optimally and as fast as possible. And another key important thing to start with is that when you start up, you need to have your car in the absolute most realistic camera angle that you can get, and that is the far chase cam. So yes, it's some people may argue that it's not realistic because you're in your racing sim and you're supposed to act like you're in the car. But in this case, you need to have all sorts of perspective of where your car is and where other cars are. So in my mind, it's realistic in the fact that you're acting like a chase camera car you're like a big old mercedes suv chasing down your car and that i feel like is very realistic so the first corner is possibly the most important corner of any corners as it is the spot that you can gain the most amount of positions in the least amount of time so here's a great example of that so as we're going here you want to be able to draft your uh, opponents here kind of getting behind them and then maybe you'll do a, a pass here, but then you got to make sure that you're flooring it and you're flooring it and you're flooring it. And then you take them out there. And that is an amazing time saver because that is somebody you don't have to pass later in the race. It is some, one of the best, most optimal things that I've ever found in r sim racing. So this next set of corners is possibly the most famous on this course, and that is Eruge and Radion. So if we take a look here, you've got kind of the sweeping uphill corner going off to the left, coming back to the right, and then coming back to the left off to one of the longest straights on the track. So it doesn't really make sense because you have to go uphill and you're braking and you're cornering. But here, if you look at it with this diagram that I've written up, all you do is you can go straight through it all and you save so much time. So here, here is an example. So all you have to do is kind of go up here and there you go. Make a immediate position gain. Don't have to slow down at all. And everything is exactly as you need to get ready for the next corner. So I say the next corner, but actually it's a straight. It's actually the Kemmel straight, which is the longest straightaway on the Spa Franco Shop course. Now it's, this should go without saying, this is actually the most intuitive part that it requires very little thinking. And it's actually the most straightforward thing that you can do on this course. <laughs> that was a good tweet. Next part of the course is where the establishment really starts to flex their muscles. This part is you've got this complex, I think it's known as Lecom, 
and you take like a you, at the end of the camel straight you hard break and then you go right and then left and then right and it's kind of weird so this is the fastest way that i found so you're going full speed at the end of, end of camel straight and you just kind of let off a little bit there and you're able to go all the way over here and look at that you're already miles ahead of the competition what a move Turn 10 is a really interesting one here because dotted around the course, there are these really large areas of car parks, but they're in the middle of the track. Well, maybe not in the middle, but just right off the course. So in these spots, I found it absolutely optimal when you're not on a flying lap to do this. So you come in fast and all you got to do is do... There we go, do some donuts. Warm up those tires there. And yeah, all you gotta do is do a couple of little quick donuts there, really heat up those tires, and you can get right back into the action. Turn 12 is one of the more interesting corners where it's kind of a corner, but also not really. I know there's like a technical strat where you wanna just break and go down a gear and kind of coast and then come around, but like I was seeing before, there's this huge car park just right next to it. And it got me thinking, I, I'm a huge physics major nerd here. So Newton's second law of scientific method is that whenever an object is in motion and likes to stay in motion, whenever an object is at rest, stay at rest. So here's my optimal line. So you approach the corner and you've noticed your penalty signs are still kind of out of the way. So you want to make sure you hit them and then you just floor it. You just floor it in why I don't know why that they put that edge of the track there when they've got all of that and just like that you're through it. Absolutely great driving. So turns 15 and 16 are arguably the hardest corners in the entire course. And to much of a strat goes, I mean, if you go a little bit wide, you hit a gravel trap, but if you go too slow, then you just stop. So here's the best line that I've found. Kind of go over here, break a little bit. Really want to go all the way over here. And once again, you're just off on your way. What a great move. Now, like I was saying before, 17 and 18 are quite similar to 12, or here's what you want to do. I mean, they've got all that space all the way out there. So, I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to just really let off. And it gives you a little bit of extra move to do stuff like that. Beautiful driving. So the final set of corners here, I believe is called the bus stop chicane. Now it's really interesting because after a very long straight ish, you have to do like a stop. And then when you're like going through a car park kind of speed, you're going like only 10 to 20 miles an hour, just going around this really slow corner. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, so as you can tell, the establishment had turned off the lights on us because we were driving so fast. So what we do here is at full speed, we kind of just barely let off, kind of let the car do its thing. And beautiful, look at that. We're able to just keep going. And then that's a whole lap of spa. So let's see if we can put it all together here for you guys. All right, and here's a lap of spa. So we're gonna make sure that we turn our traction control all the way down. We're gonna approach the first corner. There's nobody there. So just kind of, I don't know, turn whenever. Because normally other people really do help. They're so supportive. They're so cooperative that they allow themselves to be a wall for you to kind of bounce off and get the right angle. So it works out perfectly. So going up here, don't want to do any of those stupid corners. Kind of go up here. Perfect. I mean, that is just an absolutely perfect straight line through there. So then right about here. We're going to sit right about there. Okay. <laughs> That's a funny tweet. Okay. Built the revs. Move the brake bias just once, I guess. All right. And we are off and running once again. 
Perfect. We got to make sure that our traction control is not remotely disabled by the establishment. We're going to cut across here. Pull that corner off perfectly. And then around here, I don't know. Let's try to see if we can pull off some cool drifts or something. Yeah, just like that. Okay, we are doing absolutely perfectly here. So then we pass all of our penalty point uh, redeemers. I don't know. And then we'll kind of go around over here. Perfect. And I don't know, somewhere around here. And then we kind of got to do one of these. Awesome. And then we approach up here. I don't know. The spin is absolutely essential in this area. Coming up here at full speed and and continuing on at full speed. And then around here, we do something like that. Make sure we take some extra room. And then finally, we start coming on over here. The establishment has seen how fast we're going is turned on the rain mid lap. And then it's absolutely important that you do a donut right out of the end to solidify a really good lap time. Now you see there's all sorts of penalties and you see that there's all kind of red markers. So here's what we're going to do. So it was a 327.429 uh, minus that minus that plus that minus traction control uh, multiply it by 30 times it by 7 divided by 18 look at that we have a world record time there of 54 point six one seconds i mean that is just incredible timing i've never seen anything like that so thank you all for watching this amazing guide of how to get the best lap time on spa if you enjoy this content make sure to like comment and subscribe we got a lot more of these next we've got uh, monza coming up next and that one is one of the fastest tracks with no chicanes at all it's amazing so again thanks so much for watching hope you guys uh, have a great day today. Take care. Bye.